Claudia Nice is a native of the Pacific Northwest and a self-taught artist who developed her realistic art style by sketching from nature. Her oils, acrylics, watercolors, and drawings can be found in private collections nationally and internationally. Claudia has been an art consultant for several internationally known art product companies and currently represents the United States as a member of the advisory panel for the Society of All Artists in Great Britain. An author of more than 25 essential art instruction books, Claudia has traveled internationally conducting workshops, seminars, and demonstrations at schools, clubs, art shops, and trade shows, and has served as a judge at major art competitions across America. Claudia operates her own teaching studio, Brightwood Studio, in the beautiful Cascade Wilderness near Mount Hood, Oregon. Her website is www.brightwoodstudio.com. In this video workshop, Claudia shows you how to create a tree landscape in watercolor pen and ink, demonstrating both up-close realistic detail and distant tree characteristics, with emphasis on composition, color mixing, application, and texture. The technique that I want to show you, I'm going to start out with the black because you'll be able to see it a little clearer. And I call it pen blending because you're going to be blending the pen work right into the watercolor. To do this, I want it to flow like watercolor, and I'm going to take some clean water and either a flat or a stroke brush. I'm going to stroke carefully and lightly the area that I want to work on, just a little bit at a time with water. If you get it too wet, the pen won't flow. If you get it too dry, it's not going to flare. And what happens? as you work over that wet surface is it's going to flare spontaneously I think I'll move to a little larger so that you can see that better on the camera okay there do you see that flare you never know when it's going to catch it flare or when it'll go straight ink okay now I'm out of the wet zone and see it changes back to a regular ink line it's these fun flares Ooh, there it goes. That gives you that spontaneous knot hole, crevice, tree bark effect. Because you never know when it will happen, so you can't really control it. Okay. I'll just fill in a little bit in this area. When it stops flaring, it may be drying out a little much. The bigger your pen, the bigger the flares. I'll show you what a 50.50 .50 will do. I don't use it too often, but if you wanted a big knot hole, there you see it's really, really flaring. Okay, so you determine the effect by the size of your nib. Okay. This will probably take a while, especially if you're going to try to reconstruct a lot of the Here's the old bark, the crevices and the dentions. Make sure that you follow the grain of the wood just like you did when you were painting. You don't want to overdo it, just here and there. See how nice these light areas that we've left are continuing to come out and give us a little bit of contrast go in here. I can also use the uh, straight ink stroke without the flare if I want to, when I want thin lines. If I want that to flare again, just wet it. And I can use it as a blending tool. Look at that. As long as I hit that ink while it's still wet. I can put edges on with the ink if I'd like to. I don't want to do too many sharp edges, but if I have a little bit of a flare that didn't show up when I painted, I can trim or I can add to with that ink, ink work. The idea is not to have it look like ink work. We want to look like it just popped right out of the watercolor. And that certainly doesn't look like any ink pen I've used unless you work on a wet surface. Okay, as I move up into these branches, I want to make sure that I go to a smaller size because they're smaller. There we go. This is the .25. It's a little damp. With a Kleenex I can blot a little of that away and it'll work better. There we go. 
Now we get the flare. So it's really the amount of water that determines the effect you're going to get from nothing if it's too wet to a nice flare if it's just damp. And you can go on to the dry areas and you get that faded look. See how that looks? Really get the ridges. Now where your dark areas are, you can continue some lines out from those so they don't look quite so stark right into the tree. Now this can take hours. It depends on how fussy you want to get to just a few creases here and there. And I'm going to work a little more on this and uh, let you watch the progress. And we'll see how we can develop these trees. And then we're almost going to be done.